Angelo Zeno at CFRA Research, senior equity analyst there, has a buy rating. Andrew Graham, CEO at Jackson Square Capital, noting the monetization of AI. We've been waiting to say that sentence, how it's actually really happening. Um, and it's really happening. So let's start with our conversation, Angelo. What stood out from the report? Um, and it's getting the Wall Street love. Some of your thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I think it has more. I think it has. Sorry. I think it has Angela. Yeah, so, um, you know, when I, when I kind of look at it, I think it has more to do with the guidance than anything else. I mean, they kind of guided um, for the September quarter about, you know, plus 5% on a year-over-year -year basis. That was a little bit better than where we had anticipated for about 4% growth. And also, you know, the quarter, for the most part, kind of came in um, very solid all across the board. Um, you know, iPhones were down about 1%, but you actually look at growth non-iPhones, um, grew 10% year over year. So it actually kind of shows the diversification um, across their ecosystem and the growth that they're seeing outside of iPhones. But of course, it's going to be all about iPhones um, looking here over the next 12 months. And we continue to be very positive on this kind of iPhone 16 cycle. Uh, next catalyst clearly on the calendar here is going to be that September event. That's right. Um, Andrew, some of your thoughts from the quarter. Yeah, it's so a, an uneventful beat and raise quarter from Apple into an AI upgrade cycle in September launch, as Angelo mentioned, of the iPhone 16. And the company just, I think, already showing confidence in, in that product and the upgrade cycle with the September and uh, quarter guide. Um, so that guidance, by the way, is only going to include a, a several days, a handful of days of uh, iPhone 16 uh, sales for the for the AI upgrade. So I guess the other thing I would mention is that before WWDC in June, everybody thought that Apple was way behind in AI. And now it looks like they're going to be the first consumer products company, first major consumer products company to monetize AI in a big, big way. So it's um, an easy one in here. I think we're going through this correction right now in the market certainly for tech, and we're also going through a valley of AI disillusionment, maybe. And that uh, we use, I think, as an opportunity to add exposure. Is the AI monetization because they're putting it on the phones and people are buying the phones, or is it more than that, yeah. Andrew? There's been some skepticism, cynicism around uh, where's the killer app. I think that came out of, of the June developers conference. And I think the killer app is going to be different for everybody. And again, they've got the software development kit, the SDK, in the hands of third-party developers now. And some of the stuff is going to be up to them in terms of what they develop. But this is just another investment that Apple's made, just like you know Face ID, which you don't think anything of, but actually drove a lot more engagement. So Apple intelligence is going to drive a good deal more engagement. It's going to make other devices um, that Apple has more desirable. It's going to lower churn. Uh, in the install base, it's going to, you know, Apple's going to get more pricing power and market share gains and ultimately a higher ARPU or average uh, revenue per user. So that's that's the game here. Angelo, you have the buy rating. We saw uh, wearables down, but services up. You talked about the growth the year over year, not necessarily in the iPhones, but what's going to drive some things in your mind that you keep the buy rating? What helps Apple going forward? Yeah, I mean, listen, it is going to it's going to be iPhone driven in the, in, over the next year, definitely, um, in terms of kind of where the upside potential here is. I mean, we're talking about kind of um, and really kind of from a geographic perspective. Also, China is going to be incredibly important, right? Um, China, you know, including the decline that we saw this quarter has now been down six out of the last seven quarters. What we've all, always said is kind of Apple kind of goes as China goes in many respects in terms of um, that growth trajectory. So we do believe the comps get extremely easy here over the next year um, within China. We do think kind of the iPhone um, sales could, you know, grow at least six to ten, six to eight percent on an annualized basis here in each of the new cy uh, two cycles. With upside to that, um, we, you know, our view is this is going to be more evolutionary than than cyclical in nature because of the timing of some of these AI capabilities, you know, on an international perspective. But that said. Um, yeah, the, the upside potential is going to come from the iPhone side of things um, and the, the services side of things we think can continue to grow at a low double digit uh, percentage pace. And you, you saw the guidance that they provided uh, for services that kind of demonstrates that. Look, it's not that far off. It's highs. Um, do you see this being a 250 stock, Angelo? $300 stock? 
months. I mean, we see it as a 260 stock over the next uh, 12 months and, you know, with upside potential to that. So, again, I mean, I think it all depends on kind of um, how this next cycle is going to look. We actually do think our estimates as well as the consensus estimates are probably too low. But, you know, I mean, clearly there are some macro issues that are out there that we do have to worry about. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, given kind of the fact that we haven't really seen a, a really good um, upgrade cycle on the unit side of things since the iPhone 12, we've got now kind of a much bigger um, and also aging install base out there. So that does provide some nice upside potentially over the next two cycles. Andrew, I have 10 seconds. You buy this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You don't have to buy it today because there's other things going on. You've got, you know, busy with other things. But... Look, the 5G uh, upgrade cycle was big. The stock got a 31 multiple. Our target price was just a little bit above Angelo's. is based on 26 times 25 year-end numbers. But this is going to be much bigger. It's not just phones. It's going to apply to all the devices. So, um, yeah, this is the one. The, if you're going to be buying one, you're going to be keeping one here. It's this. Great. Yeah. Andrew Graham. Jackson Square Capital, Angelo Zeno, CFRA Research. Thank you for a good look there at Apple. Appreciate it. Appreciate you.